As a result of the coronavirus pandemic that ravaged across the planet, we now live in a crazy ass remote world where there's one thing that has stayed a constant throughout, video calls. As a Google employee who spent over 700 hours of my time over the last year in video calls, I'm here with a few hacks to make your Google Meet calling experience that bit better. And if you use Google Meet a lot, stick around till the end of the video where I'll give a little bonus tip of something that I've also found really helpful too. The first hack, and honestly, when I discovered this, I was just completely blown away, is the ability to use Google Meet to call anyone, any business, any number in the entire world for free. Hey Sundar. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just wanted to call you actually, just to let you know my latest video is out. It's all about Google Meet hacks, and I'm actually calling you for free using Google Meet right now. Yeah, even though I'm in the UK and you're in the US. Well man, I hope things are good. Check out the video, hit the subscribe button below if you're not already, and I'll catch you in a bit. Oh, thanks man, in a bit, bye bye. So how did I actually use Google Meet to call Sundar there? Well, what you wanna do is head to Google Meet, click the add person icon, and then click on the call icon. Once you've done that, paste in the number that you wanna call, just make sure you've got the right country code that you want to use. And this is completely free and works with any number. So I think this is really, really useful for people who can't travel internationally to see family or friends, or more importantly, if you're using this for business purposes, you can do international business calls and call someone who lives in a completely different country, get them to join your Google Meet call at no extra cost. You can use it for friends, family, business, whatever you wanna do, as long as you have a Google Workspace subscription that is, I think, just anything higher than the starter one, you can use this to make free calls to any number in the world. It's an incredible hack. So the next hack is all about checking your setup before you jump into a call. So you can do a mic and camera check using Google Meet. So whether you're using it for work, to catch up with your mum, or maybe even host your virtual Dungeons and Dragons meetup. You wanna be looking and fundamentally sounding your best. And Google Meet has the perfect audio and visual checks before you even enter the call. So you know, you can feel reassured that you've not got anything stuck in your teeth or you've left your bed unmade or you've got your partner walking around with no clothes on. You can check all this before you jump into the meeting. And with Google Meet specifically over Zoom, Skype, or any other video tool, it actually gives you a chance to record a short clip of yourself and listen back too. So once you join a call, even if you're hosting your own one just to test this, you'll be shown your audiovisual feed. And at this point, it's only visible to yourself. If you go to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a button that says check your audio and video. And this will allow you to see your microphone, camera, speaker input, speaker outputs. Though in most cases, to be honest, I found that the default will work fine. It's usually if you're using like an external mic or an external camera that you may just wanna double check. And once you're happy with your settings, you can click on next and you'll be given the option to record a short clip and watch it back. The third hack, and the one that I am most proud of the Google Meet engineers for building over the past year, is all about being able to reduce your background noise when you're on a video call. So this is all about limiting the distractions that always happen and filtering out that background noise so that Meet can just focus on your voice and nothing else. So it can remove background noises such as someone typing, someone closing a door, the sound of a construction site, dogs barking, maybe like a baby crying. But as soon as you enable that noise cancellation feature, silence. 
and Google Meet will just focus on the sound of your voice. And the best thing is, any audio capture from any screen sharing or anything like that won't be affected by the noise cancelling either. And with this feature, Google Meet will filter out any sounds that don't sound like a human voice. So on the contrary, if having some sort of non-speech is an important part of your call, so maybe you're trying to get like saxophone lessons remotely, then noise cancellation is probably not gonna work for that. So how do you turn it on? Well, when you're in a video call, go down to the bottom of Google Meet, click on more options, then hit settings, then click on audio and click on turn on noise cancellation. Then you're golden. So the fourth tip is all about being able to change or blur your background super, super easily. And this feature was the source of, let's face it, a lot of viral videos over the past year from professors, from councils, from people who were in court, in virtual court, from people who hadn't fully grasped this element of Google Meet. <laughs> And if I just... Oh. Why apologize for my silence here? Why? Uh... So while this feature is super fun to play with and definitely useful in a few different precarious situations, it's also a very useful tool in just maintaining your audience's attention. Particularly if you don't have like an incredible background behind you, you can really use this to reduce the visual noise in conversations and presentations. And to access this tool, just look for a button that says change background in the preview screen, um, or you can even do it when you're in the call, which will give you the option of blurring lightly, heavily, or even uploading your own image, so your own background or something like that. And if you're in the meeting and you're worried that your partner's gonna get out of the shower and walk into the shop, then all you need to do is click on the three dots in the bottom right corner and then click on change background as before. Good way of saving you from any kind of potentially awkward situations, that one. <laughs> so in at number five is being able to change the layout on Google Meet to suit the best kind of situation that you're in. We're getting into a little bit more advanced stuff here that may be especially useful if you're using Google Meet for work or if you're in a Google Meet call that has like hundreds and hundreds of people. And changing the layout of a call allows you to best match the conversation with how you best take in information. So if you're presenting, do you wanna see everyone at once and take in people's reactions live? Well, in that case, you'll probably wanna use the tiled view, which fits in as many people on the screen as physically possible. Do you wanna focus perhaps on just having one speaker with less distraction from other members? Maybe you're just trying to listen to a lecture. Well, in that case, I would use the sidebar view, and this gives one speaker a much, much larger view than others and reduces distractions. There's even a study that University College London did that when the sound that you're hearing matches what you're seeing, your auditory cortex privileges the sound. So it kind of like double focuses in on what you're like looking at and seeing, making it seem kind of louder and a little bit clearer to understand. So maybe you're trying to impress your boss at work and be the first with an answer, seeing their face front and center could in theory make a difference. And finally, if you're having a big debate or like a dynamic kind of conversation, Spotlight View is the one. This is what's gonna highlight the active speaker, giving you everyone a chance to own the stage for a minute and focusing on who is actually talking. But at the end of the day, that's just a few suggestions for me. Try out these different views yourself and see what works. And just as a little bonus tip, if you're tired or bored or distracted by looking at your own face, you can also remove your own tile by clicking on the upper right hand corner of your video. And it, it just lets me stop worrying about my hair or something else that is going on and just really focusing on the meeting and just what I'm trying to get out of that call. In at number six is the ability to cast the meeting that you are in onto a far bigger screen than the one that you're currently using. So for example, in this hybrid workspace that we're in, you may be doing the call on your laptop, 
but you may have a TV with like a Chromecast plugged into it. So if you're doing a call in an office or in a meeting room or you're catching up with a group of friends or family, you can actually share the Google Meet call onto a bigger screen using a Chromecast or Chromecast TV. So how do you do this? What you do is you click on the three dots at the bottom of the screen and click on cast this meeting and then choose the device from the kind of cast list with which you want to share the meeting to. Particularly handy this if someone is giving a presentation and you want to view it on the big screen. But obviously just consider that this doesn't change the input in terms of like your camera and microphone from the original device or the original laptop. It just changes the display of the meeting onto another screen. So for me, this is super handy if I'm in a kind of group of people, some are in the office, some are at home, and I'm basically just trying to show the presentation that someone remotely is giving on a bigger screen so we're just not all crowded around the laptop. And it's just a bit handier than plugging in a HDMI cable or, or figuring out that we don't even have a HDMI cable. So that's when I've used it in the past, it's been very handy. In at number seven is all about using breakout rooms. So this was a big one this year for people who are students in universities and locked down in various different countries. I've heard so many different tales of people being sent to breakout rooms during seminars and you always have that kind of weird awkwardness of no one speaking at all for 20 minutes. But if you're not a student and you are part of like a community or something like that, I've seen breakout rooms really useful from a point of like brainstorming, compartmentalizing larger projects and also if, particularly if you're in like a big group and you're in like a smaller breakout room just to kind of network and really get to know new people. This is a premium feature within Google Workspace and you need to be on like the business standard plan or above to be able to get this feature um, or if you're on an education plan it's also enabled too. So if you're on the appropriate Workspace subscription click on activities in the top right and select breakout rooms. Decide on the number of rooms that you want to create, who you want to place in each room. I think you can do it randomly as well. And then click on open. If you're the host, you can supervise each room. You can dip in and out of them. And if people get stuck, they can even like raise their hand and it will send like a little alert to you in the main room. And from this activities menu, you'll also see a couple of different options of how to set up a Q&A. And also a really, really nice option and a really cool thing you can do now is be able to create a poll and share that poll live within the Google Meet call. So three really, really handy built-in activities that you can do right within Google Meet. So if you've got through to the video all the way here, this is the bonus tip and it is all about extensions. Obviously, there's a load of stuff that Google Meet can do natively, but if you go to the Chrome Web Store, you'll see that there is a ton of enhanced functionality that you can add in. So like timers, quizzes, even like a transcription service. And if you really fancy it, a button that you can press that launches your very own party within Google Meet. So definitely head to the Chrome store and have a look at some of the extensions that you can add for Google Meet to make your call that little bit more interesting, that little bit more fun, or add an option for some further engagement. If you like this video, you'll probably love this video right here, which is some hacks on how to really optimize the use of Gmail. If not that one, you'll probably love this video here, which is all about how to optimize the use of Google Calendar, specifically in the creation and management of events. Definitely check out one of these two videos here. Otherwise, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.